We persist because we are called to inform, to inspire, to be inspired. There is a button produced by the Syracuse cultural workers that says, it is not our ability to inform, but our ability to inspire that will turn the tide. This doesn't mean we don't inform ourselves and others about the problems we see in the world. But we often find that the information is out there. People in large numbers know that the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan must end. But how do we, how do we inspire them and ourselves to act on that knowledge, to help bring our wars to an end? Even as we are informed about the war against the earth, the BP oil spill being a prime example, we are inspired by the actions of Bolivia in calling the Conference on Climate Change and Mother Earth last April. Ten years ago, the people of Bolivia inspired the world as they organized massive resistance to the Bechtel Corporation and thereby stopped the privatization of their water. We are inspired that Vandana Shiva and other environmentalists have recently filed a groundbreaking lawsuit in Ecuador against BP for violating Ecuador's constitution, which recognizes the rights of nature across the globe. In particular, the suit defends the rights of the Gulf of Mexico, which have been violated by BP's oil spill. In one of the most hope-challenged conflicts in the world, that between Israel and the Palestinians, actions continue to inspire more nonviolent work for peace. Families from both sides who have lost loved ones to the conflict work together to build understanding. The family of Rachel Corey, who was killed by an Israeli bulldozer, tells her story as one step toward finding justice for Palestinians. The Gaza flotilla attacked in May while carrying aid to that small blockaded land got widespread attention. Other flotillas will follow. We are inspired by the peace community of San Jose de Apartado, Colombia, in their courageous act of nonviolence and practicality, declaring their peasant community neutral as armed actors, guerrillas, military and paramilitary, fight to control their region. We are inspired that a massive resistance movement arose immediately in response to the June 2009 military coup in Honduras even as we are saddened by our own government's support for the coup. We can find hope in the young people of Afghanistan involved in the group Our Journey to Smile. They write, for those of us who live in war, we have a heightened awareness that the end comes to all of us eventually. But we wonder if, in the short meantime, we can find compassion and truth. They have held vigils and conferences, and their young doctor advisor, Hakeem, writes, we have a crisis not of terrorism, but, but of what it means to remain human. And to resolve this, we need to reconcile our maddening hearts to the imperative of ending all wars. We persist because we are called to be in communities of peace. Sometimes we find ourselves standing alone, and that can be quite powerful. Charlie King sings about a woman who stood alone on a Kansas City street corner on the day we began bombing Iraq. Her tall sign read simply, God bless the people of Iraq. We have all acted alone, but I think it is community that keeps me going, that keeps us going. The community of this Peace Walk, the community of our church peace groups, our community peace groups like the POCO and Veterans for Peace, the communities we join are formed for our various peace efforts. There is a sacredness to our peace community, to our efforts to end war. We know that each of us can come up with better ideas than the war and violence so commonly offered as the solution to our world's problems. As we search for those better ideas in community, our chances are increased for finding a message or action that breaks through the apathy of the status quo. These many examples of concrete actions that people have taken, are taking to end war and build a safer world. Let us know that our work does make a difference, that we are not alone, that we too can find a way to raise our voices. 
We can be grateful that even though we have only begun, we have begun. We have an obligation to continue the witness, but also the opportunity to do so as part of a large peace effort through the ages with great geographic and human diversity. There is a Denise Levertov poem, Beginners, that often inspires me. But we have only begun to love the earth. We have only begun to imagine the fullness of life. How could we tire of hope? So much is in bud. We have only begun to imagine justice and mercy. Only begun to envision how it might be to live as siblings with beasts and flower, not as oppressors. We have only begun to know the power that is in us if we would join our solitudes in the communion of struggle. We can't predict when the present wars our war as an institution will cease. We can't know how it will be accomplished. But we can be part of what moves us forward to that goal. A big challenge now is figuring out how to convince our neighbors that 25% or more of the military budget must be cut now to get us on a path to ending the cycles of violence coming from our government. Bring our war dollars home to address all our very human and humane needs. Such first steps can save lives and get us moving in the direction of compassion. We must keep walking, vigilantly, praying, sitting in, writing, speaking out, until the strangest dream that the world agreed to put an end to war is no longer strange. And until the riverside, where we laid our sword and shield, contains all the disarmed weapons of war. Wow.